I'm Neil McGregor, the director of the British Museum, and uh, I'm here to talk about Shakespeare's Restless World. But the point of the book is to try to get us back to what it was like to hear those words for the first time. What's it like when you set off to walk over London Bridge or sail over the Thames to go to the Globe? What are you thinking about? What do you bring to the plays? And objects, I think, make that possible uh, much more powerfully than anything else. I think there are a lot of parallels to today. What I'm interested in is that the generation born like Shakespeare around 1560 are in a world that's completely different from the world that their parents knew. And that's, I think, very like today. I mean, so much has changed so fast that there's a sense you've got to reinvent the world uh, without that guidance, without that pattern. And that, I think, is very like today. So what I've been trying to pick up is that Shakespeare, in the way he thinks about a new world that is being discovered but also being made, is very like what we're all trying to do today. I think objects are an extraordinarily powerful way of being taken back to another place or to another world. And I think without question the, the most striking object is the eye of the Jesuit martyr Edward Oldcorn, where you actually see that eye and think that this was somebody killed because of the gunpowder plot and the eye rescued after public execution. You are immediately back in England of 1606 with all that worry, fear that the whole state's going to be overthrown and used to looking at brutal executions. And that, of course, changes the way we then think about what we see on stage in Shakespeare, I think. So yes, well, I'd like to say hello to Ben Salveson and to Charlie. <laughs> and very good to see you. <laughs> Thank you.